Today uh, we are going to make a flutter book. A flutter book is a glued structure. The pages are attached at the front edge and the spine is not attached. It's covered by a loose paper cover. It's a very kind of sculptural book. Uh, it's a nice process for pages that you can do full spread artwork on. You can pre-print, you can pre-paint your pages and then assemble them together into the book. Uh, this one is just covered with a simple paper wrapper, folded paper. So today I'll be walking you through the steps of how to make the flutter book. Now I have pre-painted my pages here and my pages, the artwork connects on them so it feeds from one to the other. So what I've done is I've labeled on the back the order that the pages get attached in. So I've numbered right here so I know which order to glue these pages in. Now the materials you're going to need, uh, you'll need your pages cut to size. Just be really careful about making sure everything is exactly the same size. Um, you want your pages to line up perfectly when you stack them on top of each other. You'll also need some paper for the cover. This should be the same height as your text pages, but you're going to want it to be longer because we need it to wrap the front, the back, and the spine. So cut it at least an inch longer, uh, wider if you think your book is going to be thicker than one inch. We'll be trimming the excess off later. You'll need your bone folder, a pencil, a glue stick, and a knife. And I also have strips of wax paper that I'll be putting between my pages so I don't get glue all over everything. So the first step is going to be to fold my pages in half. This is a printing paper, uh, so it should fold pretty easily. If you find that when you fold your pages, they're cracking in the middle, you'll want to pre-score with a ruler and your bone folder. You'll do the score first and then fold it over. But generally, we're just going to start by folding all of the pages in half. And you want to be really precise so that you have a nice crisp fold and everything lines up. So each sheet will get folded in half. And with this process, each sheet of paper that you start with will give you two pages because we're not using the reverse. That will be kind of hidden inside the book. You want to think about your sizes as well. Uh, keep in mind whatever size paper you cut, the final size of your book will be half of that. So if you want your book to be, say, 5 by 7, you would need to cut your pages to 10 by 7 so that when you fold it in half, you get the final 5 by 7 size. So I've got all of my pages folded now, um, and I've stacked them up so I can see my numbers. Now I'm going to start from the back of the book and glue number six first, put five on top, then four, three, two, one, so that when I open the book everything is in the correct order. Now this is a really simple process to glue. I do want to slip a piece of wax paper or scrap copy paper or anything under there just to keep the glue off of my working surface. And I'm simply going to be applying the glue stick to this first half inch or so of paper on the fore edge here. So this is the unfolded side, this half inch area is where I'm going to apply the glue. And I just want a nice even layer of glue, uh, making sure that the edge and the corners get enough glue on them. And I can remove my wax paper. And then the important part here is lining everything up exactly. So I want to make sure that all four corners are lined up and that my pages are sitting exactly on top of each other. And I'm going to press down pretty firmly and then take my bone folder and just burnish that so that the glue gets a good seal. And the more precise you are stacking up your pages, the more even and square your book will be by the time you get to the end. So now I'm going to open the next signature that I just glued down, put some wax paper in, and glue this front edge again. So I'm basically stacking my pages on, gluing up that front half inch, looking out for any glue that gets stuck on the edge, and then stacking my next signature on top. And again, I want to be really careful with lining these up 
nice and square. Burnish that with the folder. Slip in another piece of wax paper, glue the edge. Now your paper choice for this, I would recommend a thicker paper. Uh, your drawing weight paper or anything heavier like the Arches cover or the Reeves BFK is great for this. Anything thinner is going to tend to buckle with the glue stick. So I would definitely go for a thicker paper for this project. It also stands up better if you wanted to do some watercolor or some ink washes or any sort of more intensive drawing process in this before you assemble your pages. Uh, but the drawing weight paper should be sufficient as well. Just don't go any thinner than your drawing paper. So I just continue stacking these up until I get to my last signature here. And burnish it down to make sure everything is attached really well. Now I can pick this up and see that it sort of accordions out like this. The front edges look like they're pretty nicely secured and they're nicely and evenly aligned. So now is the time to attach our soft cover. So I'm going to take my cardstock. Uh, this is just a kind of mid-weight cardstock. It's about the same as my inside pages. For your cover, you want something that's the same or thicker than your inside pages just to give it a little bit of stability. Now to measure for the cover, I'm going to place the book along the right side here and line it up. I want the edge of my pages and the edge of the cover to be flush. I'm just going to make a mark, a really small pencil mark, where the edge of the book hits right here. That's going to be the start of my spine. Then to measure how thick this is, I'm going to just flip the book up and kind of arrange it so that the spine is going to expand just a little bit. I don't want to really clamp it together like this. I want to have it kind of loosely expanded. I'm going to arrange that right by that first pencil mark and then make a mark on the other side of the book. So this will be the thickness of your text block here. and then arrange the book to line up with that next mark. I'm gonna make a mark where the book ends and that's where I'll trim the excess cover off. So I'm gonna trim this excess portion off, line it up on my grid here. And just trim off this excess. Now before I try to assemble this, I also need to score my spine so that I get this nice crisp fold here. This shouldn't be kind of a U shape, you want it to be nice 90 degree creases. So I'm going to again line my two pencil marks up on my grid. And I'm just going to use the tip of my bone folder to really make a nice score. So I'm pressing down really firmly to impress that line into the paper. Now I'll line up the other mark. And using the point of the bone folder to press down to get a good score in there. Now I want to pre-fold my cover, so I'm going to gently fold this over. Make sure that these edges here line up so that my, my fold is square and just give that a nice crease with the bone folder. Flip it open and do the same for the other side. So this will give you a preview of what your cover should look like. Now before you glue anything in, you always want to do a dry fit. So put your book in, make sure that the pages are not super compressed in the middle, that your spine is not too small, but also that the pages don't stick out on the edge here, everything should be pretty flush. So this looks pretty good. This edge actually is overhanging just a little tiny bit, so I'm gonna trim 
just the slightest bit off of here so that when the book is pressed all the way to the spine, that edge is not showing. So I'm gonna make a quick adjustment to my cover. Just trim off a little bit less than a sixteenth of an inch, really. And then check again. So that looks much better. Now the front edge of the cover is flush with the pages of the book. So to glue this on, uh, first I wanna make sure if I have my cover pre-titled that my book is going in the correct orientation. And we're going to attach the cover pretty much the same way as we attach the pages. So I'm gonna put some scrap paper behind this and I'm just gonna apply glue to the outer half inch of my cover here. Again, you really want to make sure that the corners and the edges get a good coating of glue, but you don't want too much that there's any little glue bits stuck on there and kind of oozing out the sides. Now I want to line everything up. So I'm lining up my corners here, and I want to make sure that the book is really pushed all the way back towards the spine. So I'm actually pushing in and then I'll press down to attach. I'm going to flip this over and just give it a quick burnish. And that would be my back cover attached. So for the front cover, same thing, I'm going to flip the book over. Apply glue to that first half inch or so of my cover. And again, I'm really pushing my text, my text block to the back of the spine. So I'm supporting the book on the spine side with my left hand, pushing the book in and then pressing down. Flip it over and burnish that cover. So when you look at it from the top, the pages should be flat against the spine here and flush along this side. And you can check how well you measured for your cover. Uh, if the book pops open a lot and doesn't want to close, your cover may, your spine may be a little too small and your pages are kind of flipping up, but this does tend to be a kind of a sculptural structure too. Uh, but as long as your spine is the appropriate width for your text block, you should be okay. So this is my final structure and it's a nice structure because you can have this flowing illustration that goes across pages. You can have text running across both spreads pretty easily. It's just a nice kind of flowing structure. Now, if I have a weight, I can put something heavy on top of this so that this will dry, uh, just like a, a heavy book or one of these little book binding weights, I can just put some pressure on that so that it dries flat as it's being, as the glue is drying. There is some moisture in even the glue stick and if you have a thinner paper that can cause the paper to ripple a little bit. So put it under some pressure while it's drying. Uh, you wouldn't wanna clamp this down in the book press though because it could compress your spine. So just some weight on the edge will keep it flat while it's drying. And then don't forget to put your title on the front cover. And that is our completed flutter book.